Hello, Tom Frezza here for the Naval History and Heritage Command with another Artifact Spotlight. This is where we take a look at the Navy's timeline and pull out different artifacts from that timeline and teach you about them. And today, we're going to be focusing on the iconic Dixie Cup. Now, before the Dixie Cup comes into the system, sailors really don't have anything to wear on their heads during the hot summer months or in tropical environments. Really, the only thing that they were issued to wear on their heads was the Navy flat hat, which is made out of wool material, which is really detrimental to the sailors in that climate. Now, sailors were given permission to private purchase uh, straw hats that they could wear, but nothing was really standardized in the regulations. Well, that changes in 1886 when the Navy writes in the regulations that sailors be issued a low rolled brim, high domed item constructed of canvas, and the Dixie Cup is born. While, yes, the early Dixie Cups were made out of canvas and uh, were, were kind of stiff to wear, uh, later ones, through cost cutting measures, were constructed of cotton, like the ones that we see today. And they were a lot floppier in the brims, which is why you see so much stitching within the, uh, uh, the brim itself today to keep that shape of the Dixie Cup. Now, while there's a lot of myths and old wives' tales about the reason that they went to the Dixie Cup, be it use as a sunscreen or as a flotation device or so something that you could bail water out of a vessel, Really, the only reason why the Dixie Cup is still around is as the uniform headgear for enlisted sailors pay grade E1 through E6. That's it. And despite the regulation saying that the cover is not to be crushed, bent, or rolled, sailors have been personalizing their hats by stylistically reshaping them since their inception. In fact, if you go through some of the historic images of sailors through the years, you can see them wearing them all sorts of different ways. Be it tilted, back, tilted to one side at a jaunty angle, be it forward on, on the, uh, the forehead, be it on the back of the head, or be it with the edges rolled down and as, I guess you could say, a uh, Gilligan style look right there. But the regulations today state again that sailors should have it no higher on their head than two fingers off of the, uh, the brim of the nose. And the other Dixie Cup that I have here is from World War II. They actually made a dyed version, a blue dyed version for sailors to wear when they were in their denim dungarees. This was the work Dixie Cup. See it as this one is white and it should be kept clean. This one you could wear on work details or when you were on deck manning different guns or pieces of machinery. And again, it was a way to distinguish sailors from each other for, for the E1 through E6 ratings. So this made them stand out. You really only see the, the dyed Dixie Cups uh, during World War II and some during the Korean War. But after that, these dyed Dixie Cups are actually phased out. Now, the Dixie Cup today is more of a uniform piece for when the sailors are in their blues. You really don't see sailors wearing this when they're on duty anymore. And the reason is, during the Cold War, they started being issued ball caps with the name of the vessel that they were on. So that becomes more of the work headgear to wear at that time. And this becomes more of an iconic uniform piece for the sailor. And with that, if you're interested in learning more, please visit the website of the Naval History and Heritage Command, history.navy.mil, and we'll see you at our next Artifact Spotlight.